Greetings to all in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Saints of God, it is an honor once more to come into your presence. I believe that the Lord God Almighty today will give us the word that will be a building block to what we have been receiving in the name of Jesus and believe that the Lord God Almighty will grant us the grace to have the knowledge of his word, to have a deeper understanding of his word. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, this morning. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. We lift King of glory, your precious holy name on high. We love you, Jesus, for you first loved us. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your compassion. The Bible declares that they are new every morning. Therefore, Lord, we are saying thank you. We bless your precious holy name. Come this morning into this place. Speak to us, Lord. Make me this morning your mouthpiece. Speak through me. But Father, I pray that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness, sanctify me, purify me, consecrate me, Lord, that your spirit may be able to dwell in me in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you. Asian of days, we give you all the praise. Spirit of the living God, right now I call unto you that you speak through me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Send the right message, actually the message that your people need to hear this morning in the name of Jesus. You are the spirit of truth. Therefore no lies can come out of you. And that is the truth we are dependent on. That is the truth we want to hear in the name of Jesus of Jesus Christ. Take control, take charge, speak to us. Over to you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen and amen. Saints of God, have you ever think of this? Why is God delivering his people? Why is the Lord God Almighty delivering his people? You know, I understand, and then I came to a place where I started to dig deep into scriptures because of the doctrine that we have received. You know, the doctrine that is mainly focusing on what God did to the children of Israel. But we are not giving the purpose of the deliverance. Why will God deliver those people? Maybe before we dive deep into the Old Testament, let me try to bring it to the New Testament first. Why did Jesus die? I want to believe there's a scripture we read in the book of Matthew, the very first chapter. I will just look for the verse. I'm not sure whether it's 18 or 21. I'm not that good with scriptures, so I sometimes have to go and check, which is what I'm doing now. Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 21, yes. And, and I want you to hear that the very same promise that we hear of in the Old Testament, the life of Abraham, Abraham, when God said that he must kill Isaac, Isaac was not the real sacrifice. It was just the shadow of what God was about to do. For salvation of men and when you look at what Isaiah was saying telling us about unto us a child is born a son is given I want you to see now when the son 
what's about to come, what God said in the book of Matthew, speaking. Verse number 21. And she will bring forth a son. And she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name. His name shall be called Jesus. For he will save his people. He from will sins. save his people from their sins. their sins. That's the reason for Jesus to die. That is why the context is important when it comes to the word of God. Jesus died so that our sins may be forgiven. And in the book of First Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 4, you will understand what is that that God wants us to do or what is the God, what is his desire when it comes to humanity. And I want us to try to look into these things this way. When you go to first two four in Timothy, go also to X three twenty six. I want us to get things right because of good people. You have to understand. I'm not saying I condone poverty, but we have to do what God wants us to do. We cannot always in every service. It's a breakthrough service. Is this service, saints of God, you will never break through. You have to understand that there's a procedure that God has put in place for us to get to his promises. For the Bible says that they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Listen to these two scriptures. I want us to, to, to have a, an understanding of what the Bible says. Listen to this. First Timothy 2.4. Who desires all men to be Who saved? desires all men? All men. To be all saved. men. He desires all men to do what? To be saved. To be saved. Not only that. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge is important. The knowledge, but the knowledge that God talks about is the knowledge of the truth. There is only one truth. Not as we hear. There are many ways to God. Just because of his opera saying it, everybody has to believe it. I don't. There's only one way. He is Jesus Christ. He is the way. Jesus is the way. There's not any other way. Buddha is not the way. No. It's not the way. Jesus is the way. Karishna is not the way. Muhammad is not the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is life. Listen to what the Bible says, 1 Timothy 2.4, He desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And listen to the scripture that has been abused. 3.26 To you for to you first, God, God, having raised up His, having son, raised up His Son, Jesus, Jesus, sent Him to bless. Listen, you. He sent Him to do what? To bless you. Wait a minute. This is where the church stops, because we have to turn that into something else. He came to do what? Listen, unto you first, God did what? Having raised up his, having raised up his servant, his servant Jesus. Jesus. Having raised up his servant, Jesus. Sent him to bless you. Sent him to do what? Bless you. To bless you. And I'm saying this is where we stop. Because the moment we get to that point, that is where we are trying to find a way into preaching prosperity and forget the important issue about what the Bible says. Listen to what the Bible is saying. He came to bless you. How? In turning away every one of you from your iniquities. In turning away every one of you from your iniquities. your iniquities, my iniquities, your iniquities. This is the reason why Jesus died. 
We use this Bible verse and say that he wants to bless us. Yes, but what is the blessing you're talking about? Saints of God, there is no money there that the Bible talks about. Yes, it is important for all of us to come to a point where we understand that God's plan is known to him. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, even Jesus quoted that, poor people will always have with you. No wonder why, when you go to the 15th chapter, the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible tells you that you must give to the poor. You must give enough to the poor. Give them enough. Open your hands. But today you'll be told at church that when you give to the poor, you will not rise. That's a blatant lie from the pit of hell. I believe the Bible. I don't care how famous a man of God is. I believe the Bible. The Bible says give. Maybe you should read it. Let's try it. Deuteronomy 15. Because there are some things that we, that we preach, some we skip. Have you heard when we preach from the pulpit telling you that you shall not uh, borrow? But you still continue borrowing. Can't just say that you shall not borrow and, and ignore other things. Please, saints of God, let us understand what is the will of God. Jesus came. The purpose was to reconcile us back to God because of what Adam did in the Garden of Eden. This was a matter of reconciling. How can just somebody decide to go and serve on the cross just for you to get money? People are still getting money without the cross. Jesus did not die. When Pharaoh had all the money, people can still have money. Let us not behave like the pagans. The only thing that they want is for, for them to have good life without God. And that is what the church is experiencing. People want to have good life without God. The weekend they have to go out. They have to go and have enough booze and enough girls. Tomorrow morning they come and say, Jesus, you are there mighty God, mighty God way. That is what the church has become today. Sin is being pampered right in the church. Listen to what verse number six says. Or maybe start by verse number five for, for more clarity. Only if you carefully obey the voice of the Lord. If you Lord. only carefully, not just carefully obey the voice of the Lord. Your God. Your God. To observe with care all these commandments which I command you today. I'm giving this commandment today. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. Verse number six. For the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. Mm -hmm. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Uh -huh. You shall reign over many nations, but you shall not reign over you. They shall not reign over you. Verse number seven. If there is among you a if, poor man. Uh, if there is among you poor man. A poor man. Of your brethren. Of your brethren. Within any of the gates in mm -hmm. your land which the Lord your God. Within gave. any of your gates, the same land the Lord has given to you. You shall not harden your heart. Nor shall the Bible says you shall not do what? Harden your heart. You shall not do what? Harden your heart. You shall not harden your heart. But you can hear a believer saying that. I'm not going to give you people who are wasting wasteful money. We say that as a punishment of God, though we don't know. The Lord is telling Moses what to tell the children of Israel. The Jews had to know that if there is any man who is poor among you, what are you supposed to do? Nor shut your hand from the poor brethren. Thou shalt not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from, from who? Your poor, brother. your poor brethren. But today when you give, you'll be told that you will not rise. In other ways, you will not be blessed. You have to give to pastors. That's a blatant lie from the pit of hell. 
The Bible is not saying pastors here. What I want us to understand, I am not attacking anybody or anything, but we have to tell the truth of God. We are called by God for a specific reason. It is not for us to choose scriptures and you don't even finish it. People will be making noise because of the idea that Jesus, uh, he raised Jesus his servant to come and bless you. That is where you end. Because why? That is what they want to hear. Do not, the Lord is saying it, shut your hand to your poor brother. Verse number 8, what is he saying? But, you shall open your hand. You shall open your hand. Wide to him. What? Wide. Wide. W-I-D-E. Wide to him. And willingly. My God. And willingly. This is Jehovah for you. And willingly lend him sufficient for you. This is Jehovah for you. Whatever he When he gave a commandment for the children of Israel to give toward the building of the church, this is the word they he used. They must do it what? Willingly. Willingly. Not the church of today that puts you in the corner. You will be cursed. Nothing in your, in your life will work. Have you ever heard Jesus saying that? Peter, Moses, telling them things like, if you don't give, you go to hell. If you don't give, you will suffer. I want us to understand today. There's a reason why God has allowed us to live today. Some has departed, there's a reason. You give what? Willingly. Uh-huh. Finish that verse number eight. But you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his sufficient needs. Sufficient for his needs. Whatever he needs. Whatever he needs. Be willing. Sufficient. I want you to jump. I don't want us to read everything. Okay. Verse number 10. You shall surely give to him. Yes. And your heart should not be grieved. And your heart should not be grieved. When you give to him. When you give to this poor man. Because for this thing. For this thing. The Lord your God will bless you in all your The ways. Lord your God will do what? Will bless you in all your ways. Will bless you in all your ways. Meaning that the scripture is blasting away what is being preached. That you have to give to pastors. <laughs> They are preaching against the word of God. Saying you will not rise. They mean financially you will not rise. But the Bible says the Lord will do what? Will bless all thy works. All thy works. And what? In all that you put your hand in. You see that? You hear what the Bible says? The Lord will bless what? Say it. The blood will bless what? Your hands. Read that scripture. I don't know people who guess. Read that scripture, that verse again. Okay. You shall surely give to him. You shall give. And your heart should not be grieved when you give to Without him. being grieved. Because for this thing, the Lord your God... Because for this thing, this your giving, all this that you are doing, Giving without grieving, uh, without having doubt in your heart. Because of all these things, what will the Lord do? The Lord, the Lord shall bless what? You in all your works. You see, in what? All your works. Be careful in all your works. works. So you see, it is not only prayer that makes things to happen in your life. If that was the case, we will all pray and not go to work. That is the easiest. We will all pray and not go to work. The Lord will bless what? Your works. Your works. Bless you. And listen to this. And, and, and what? And in all. In all. To which you put your hand. To which you put your hand. That simply means your hand must work. Your hand must work. Spirit of laziness. You speak in tongues, just like that and get nothing. Because you don't want to work. You think that prayer is a shortcut for lazy people to get what they want. The Lord said that there was no one to till the ground. Even before 
he came. It was expected of him that he would work. Eight them worked. There was no boy to till the ground. Adam had to go and name all the animals. God did not do it for him. He said, I'm just giving you the privilege, boy, of being able to, I mean, of giving this, all these animals' names. We have to work. Glory be to God. Amen. Verse number 11, listen to this. And you tell me if this is a contradiction of the scripture that we read. Verse number 11. For the poor will never cease. For the poor will not what? Cease. Will never cease. From your land. From your land. Therefore I command you, saying, you shall open your hand. Open right your hand. Your mother, to, poor, to your poor and your needy in your land. We've got so many of them. You go there by the street, by the robbers, they are there. It is expected of us to help such. I don't know how we will help them. But the Bible says we have to meet their need. The question is, is the church itself meeting the need of these people? The problem is, you know, we turn away from God. Slowly but surely. We turn away from God. You are like a husband who comes into a marriage saying that she, he loves this woman. At the end of the day, he turns away from what he has said. Now your eyes start to open to other women. That is what we're doing. That is exact, that is adultery in the church of Jesus Christ. The same problem that happened in the book of Genesis. The Bible tells us that there was a man by the name of Lord. And because of the sins that were committed in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord God Almighty was angry. He was wroth because of the sin that was being committed. People not willing to repent. People not willing to repent. All that they were doing was evil. Saints, I want you to understand that when God brings you out of something, it's for a reason. Maybe let us start there. Exodus chapter number 3. I also want to show you from that book some of the things that we dwell in which are important. Not, a, not important actually, sorry. That is secondary. I want to tell you this. An issue of wealth to God is secondary. I said the book of Exodus 3. I want you to go and read. Please read, read verse number 8 for me. So I have come down to deliver them. Listen to that. I have what? I have come down. I have come down to deliver them. I have come down to deliver them out of the land. Out of the land. Oh, out of the hand of or the hand of the Egyptians. Of the Egyptians. And to bring them up from the land. To and to bring them up from that land. From that land to a good and large land. To a good and large land. To a land flowing with milk and honey. A land flowing with milk and honey. To the place of the Canaanites. The Canaanites. And the, the Hittites. And the Amorites. The Amorites. And the Perizzites. Perizzites. And the Havites. The Hivites. And the Jebusites. And the Jebusites. The Lord is telling them, my God, the Lord is telling them what will happen at the end. Where I'm taking you. Do you still remember what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse number 10? Do you still remember that scripture? The Lord is telling them of what they will receive at the end. What is the scripture saying? Declaring the end. Declaring the end. 
From the beginning. From the beginning. And from ancient times. From ancient times. Things that are not yet done. Things that are not yet done. Say him, my counsel my shall God. stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I will do all my pleasure. It was his pleasure to take them out of that land. But what was that that God once wanted from them? That is one thing that we have to understand. Saying you are delivered for a reason. The Lord is saying that I will do what? I will give you a land. But before you get to that land, this is what you have to know. Me sending Moses to come and deliver you. There's something I want you to do for me. Chapter number five. Wait a minute, before you go to chapter number five. I want, us, I want to show us something that we dwell so much on, which is secondary to me. He said that I will do what? I will give you a land. Hallelujah. Mm. I will give you a land. What kind of land is that? A land that is flowing with milk and honey. Milk strengthens our bones honey is sweet i'm giving you a, a place in other ways i want to give you rest in a place where you will grow spiritually and where you will have enjoyment where you will rejoice always that is what i want to do for you tell you the end from the beginning that is where we're making a mistake, dwelling on the end and forget the beginning, where we have to start. I'm saying that God has a specific procedure that he applies in our lives for us to get to the end. Read verse number 21. Exodus 3, verse number 21. Stop jumping scriptures. Yeah, your mother was in that Isaiah. And I will give uh, these people favor in the sight. I will of the give Lord. these people what? I will give these people favor. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. In the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be. <laughs> and it shall be. When you go, when you, go you shall, you shall not go empty. empty the Lord is saying it. I will ensure that when you go, you don't go empty. You might have been through struggles in life. The Lord is saying that I'm aware of what you're going through. I know what happened to you. I know what they did to you. I know how they lied about you. They have scandalized your good name. They have said things about you that are not true. Something was in the pipeline. There was a plan for you to receive that upliftment in your work. But they gathered against you. And as they were gathering, things started to crumble in your life. But listen to what the Lord is saying in the book of Isaiah chapter number 43 verse number 19. The Lord is saying that I am doing a new thing in your life. Doesn't matter what they are doing to you. Let them gather, it's okay. Let them gather, it's okay. The Lord is saying, they shall surely gather. There is no doubt about it. Saying that is why he said, we have to come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus saying, in the book of John chapter number 16, verse number 33, the Lord is saying, I am telling you all this that in me you may have what? Peace. For in this world you will have what? Tribulations. The Lord is telling us what will happen to us. For the fact that you raise those hands saying that, Lord, I give my... That is not to say that you have escaped. Mm -mm. That was when you were signing for an engagement in war with the devil. What is the Lord saying? These things I have spoken to you. 
that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In the world you will have For in this world where you're living, you will have tribulations. But the church is telling you that it is over. It is well with you. The devil will not come again. I don't know what they are telling you. I'm telling you what the Bible is saying. This is what I know. In this world, what will happen to you? You will have you will have tribulations. You will have tribulations. The blood was shed on the cross of Calvary, but you still continue to have tribulations. The spear pierced his side, but you will still have these tribulations, no matter what. No matter how much you give a church, you cannot escape tribulations by giving. The knowledge is what keeps you. The knowledge is what makes you to stand. Those who know their God. In the book of Daniel chapter number 11 verse number 21. Those who know their God. Those are the people who will do exploits. Those are the people who will do exploits. Those who know their God, do you have the knowledge that you need for you to be able to stand? You will have tribulations. And our Lord, our Savior Jesus, said, Be of good cheer. Why? For I, the Lord God Almighty, for He is God have overcome the world. That is why he says, go to the book of 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 15, 3 to 17, please. 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 15 to 17. Because people don't hear what I'm, what, what, what I'm talking. <clears throat> Do not love the world. Do not love the world. He said that this is in this place, the world, where you will have what? Tribulations. So how do you love something that brings tribulations to you? I'm not talking about when the, he talks about the world. He's not talking about the world as in the earth where we are. The things, actually, that are in the world. The Lord called them the world. For the Bible says that God himself loved the world. Now, if he loved the world, how can he say that he must, we must not love the world? Understand the context of scriptures. For God did what? Said what there? Do not love the world. Do not love the world. Or the nor things the things in the world. In the world. If anyone loves the if world. If anyone loves the world. The love of the Father is not in the him. The love of the Father is not in him. That simply means the time when you turn your back against the world. Meaning sinful nature. All the iniquities and transgressions that we have been committing against God. The day we turn our backs on that. That is the world. He's saying that do not love the world, nor the things of the world. Uh huh. If anyone loves the if world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's not in him. For all that, for is all world, that is in the world, the lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, pride of life is not of the Father, but is that is not world. of the Father. But it's of the world. That is why they entice you. Every time they show you forex, they put all those nice cars and big houses in front of you that you may start to do at will last after them. And they make money out of you because you have to go and learn from them. They give you the spirit of conversion. You have to convert those houses, those nice cars. Pastors posing with rented cars so that you may give. So that at the end of the day, they will be driving those cars that they have rented, lying to you, saying that God has blessed them. God, is, their God is Avis and budget, because they rented those cars. That is their God, and the God whom they believe so much in is you. Love not the things of this world, nor the world itself, for all that is in the world is what. The last of what? The flesh. The last of the eye. And the pride of life. That is costing people so much that even if they don't have money, 
They all want to go and buy from speed. That is the, you know, pride, demonic pride. You want to appear before people as something that you are not. And that is what is happening in the church. You know that time when people used to wear sharp nose? Everybody in church was wearing that shoe. It does not matter whether they have money or not. Just because of the pastor is doing that. And unfortunately you find that the pastor was a businessman. Apart from church. A businessman who afforded a lot of things. Now you're comparing your... Instead of trying to walk in the paths of righteousness. The last of the flesh. Verse number 17. And the world is passing away. And the world is passing away. And the last of it. All that is in it. But he who does the will of God. But he who does the will of God. Abides forever. Abides forever. I want to show you something. Back to Exodus. We only quote that the Lord will favor you. The Lord will do you good. Before the end of this month, your bank account will never know zero again. We don't know. We don't know that. There are some people who honor God with their lives. They died. They have never had in their bank account above 500,000 rands. Except me when they went on pension. When they, get all the, when they got all the money. But before that, their bank account has never ever tasted 500,000 rands. And the only thing that was in their minds was to see souls being saved. Saying that, Lord God Almighty, rather give me souls to be saved that I will not undermine what happened on the cross of Calvary. Jesus gave up his life for all the souls. They said, the man said, give me Scotland or I die. Give me Scotland or I die. I think that was Alexander Doe, if I'm not mistaken. Give me Scotland, asking God, not for money, not for a big church, but God to grant him the grace for Scotland to be saved. Give me Scotland or I die. How many of us can say that today? How many of us can travel for souls? How many of us today, in the days we're living in, can travel for souls? As John G. Lake did, a man who God has to provide for each and every step he took. Those are the men of faith. Every step the man took up until he reached Pretoria. It was all God. He saw the grace of God because of he was in the will of God. You see how easy it is to say that where there is, where there is vision, there is provision. But for you, you the vision can be there, but that vision has to come to pass. Because when it's there, you have to do something. You have to do something for that vision to work out. And the man did not stop because of money. He had nothing. Every step he took, God will bring somebody in his life or in his path so that he may be able to accomplish what God has sent him to do. No wonder why Paul said, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, please. This man, God was with him. He did not look at the things, you know, those obstacles. The hurdles saying that there is no money, like the church of today, when there is no offering, it gets angry. Somebody told me yesterday night around 11, I was busy studying my Bible. So he happened to chat on Messenger. They took him out of the church. The church was closed. When I asked the man why the church closed, he's saying that he has been told by their senior pastor, so to say. Or the ones overseeing them. That the income is not enough in that branch. Is it all about the income or souls? What is the church of today all about? This is what I'm trying to tell you. That when we come to Christ, we come with a heart 
that is sincere. But as time goes on, we look back where we're coming from. The love of money comes. The same money we have been chasing in the world. Now we are chasing money in the name of Jesus. What happened to the true gospel of Jesus Christ? That says repent and be baptized all of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and who shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What happened to that gospel? How can we close the church just because there is no income? I hear this from the oldest mouth. Whether you are saying that I'm lying or I don't care, you are also lying. Because you love them so much, no matter what happens in the church, you don't care anymore. No wonder why people will go and stand and march. Have we ever seen anybody marching? Everybody, anybody protesting when Paul was being persecuted? Or even Jesus himself, when he was being persecuted, have we ever seen people marching? Everybody was quiet. Peter, who said, no matter what, Lord, I will be with you. He even said, I don't know this man. He denied him. And Jesus was never angry with him. Because he understood that this is exactly what would happen to you. When Stephen died, nobody said a word. When Paul was in prison, nobody said a word. And it was so clear that they were against what he was preaching, telling the truth. Like the church of today, that when you tell the truth, they say that you are angry. You are angry with God. The church of today. Why? Because our doctrine is not based again in the word of God. They take a scripture and twist it. Yesterday with my wife, we were talking and he said, <laughs> maybe we should go to that scripture. In the book of Isaiah, I think it's chapter number. Is it four or six? Just get that scripture for me. We were arguing and we were saying the same thing. He, she said it's true. I said it's a lie, but it's from the Bible. Is, is Isaiah what chapter number? Four. Please read. And hear what has been uh, magnified. People have been told lies. How many of you know this song that says, Kelta Tilabu Fellow, Basadi Basuba, Barai Tuarella? Moses is a false prophet. He is. That is not what the Bible says. And then after singing that part, they say, Hallelujah, Hosanna. It's a lie from the pit of hell. That is not what the Bible says. I am not even afraid to say this again. He is a false prophet. According to the scriptures, if you contradict the word of God, then you are not. You are lying to the people. And the Bible says it clear, some are doing this for their own selfish gain. Read it. And that in that day, seven, in that days, what? Seven women, seven women shall take hold of one man. And then when he appears there he, uh, with his church, he will be doing like this, seven. He's encouraging you to marry many people. I mean, sorry, many, many wives. Seven. The Holy Spirit who is dead today. We made it. Seven wives. What? Seven women shall take hold of one she, man. Seven women shall take hold of one man. One man. And then after that, what do they say? Say Hallelujah. What is the Bible saying after that? Saying, We will eat our own food. Just imagine you are a wife. You are even telling this husband that. I will eat my own food. When the husband is supposed to taking care of his wife, now you come and you say that I marry me. I, I, I will take care of my own food, and then what? We will eat our own food. We will eat our own food and wear our own wear our own clothes. Where is Hallelujah Hosanna there? Continue. Only let us be called. Only let us be called by your name. Called by your name. Why? To take away our reproach. To take away shame that we are not married. There's no hallelujah hosanna there. 
It's because of reproach they said that. Where is Hallelujah Osa? That is why you must, be, you must be careful of the songs you play. I don't care from which church. They are also the devil. You cannot try to replace Jesus with any other thing. No wonder Paul, why he said to them, what took you out of the truth so quickly? You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? The problem is that when we start in the things of God, we start with a heart that is sincere. How many of you <clears throat> knows the reason for the Lord's wife? Do you know Lot, whose wife turned into salt? What was the reason for her, for her to turn into that? She looked back. That is what most of us are doing. We look back. Most of us are looking back. That is the problem we are having. I want to show you, through men of God, what they did when they had to follow him. Saints, you have to forget what is behind you. Paul was talking about forgetting the things. And the only thing that he looks up to is what? There's a reward. We look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When you have given your life to Jesus, you are not allowed to look back. Jesus himself said that you are not fit to be my disciple. If you are putting your hands on a plow and you look back. The problem with the church of today, we are making people to look back. Do you know that there are people who the devil has, you know, at every stage of their lives. He has punished them. And those people are coming, saying that, Lord Jesus, we need your help. We've had enough of all the stripes we have received, that we have endured from the devil. We need you to rescue us. Please save me, Lord Jesus. I'm giving my life today to you. And I say that, Lord, I pray that you be exalted in my life. And Lord, I'm not even saying today more of you and less of me. But Lord, I'm saying that more of you and none of me. I want you to be the pilot of my life. Control me. Those people have been battered by the devil. Those people have been hurt. Those people have had enough. They cannot take it anymore. And they have heard that there's a man who was crucified on the cross of Calvary. His name is Jesus. And he's the one who's saying that all your burdens, give them unto me, I will carry them for you. These are the people who came to God saying that, Father, there is nothing good for us in the world. Lord, we have yet that you are able to do exceeding abundantly, Lord. But, Father, for that abundance, for it to happen in our lives. The Bible says that there's a power that has to work in me. Lord God Almighty, introduce me to that power. And I have been baptized. And they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the power they ask from God comes upon them. And what do we do? We cause them again with the gospel that we preach to look back. When they started, when they pray, they will be saying that our Father who are in heaven, thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving my life. Lord, I thank you for everything around me. I'm talking about somebody whose rent is behind. Saying that, Lord, thank you for everything. Father, I know that it is you who will make things possible for me. This person is crying to God. For he was taught that call unto me and I will answer. Now we change them. And we say unto them, God wants you to be rich. We change the doctrine of Jesus Christ that they were taught. Seek him first. Seek God first. Seek him first. 
his kingdom and his righteousness and all this we even answered that the world is crying so much after will be added unto you all the cars will be added unto you we make them to forget that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness we take righteousness and his kingdom that Jesus when he came said this kingdom is near repent seek that kingdom that is what will bring you close to God seek that kingdom and his righteousness that is what we have to seek but the world of today we're seeking other things that is not God and he said that if we have the love for this world the love of the father is not in you what is happening to the body of Christ what is happening to the body of Christ Jesus is coming are we preparing the bride of Christ for the coming of the bridegroom I've been told every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and you shall put them upon your sons my god is saying that your sons will wear jewels he's saying that they will wear silver they say that they will wear gold they will have raiment that are so beautiful but we forget to tell them that live righteously Prepare yourself for where we're going. The Bible says that there are streets of gold. The street is paved with gold. You will be trampling upon gold. That is why you have to prepare yourself now to wear the gold. For where you are going, the streets are of gold. Oh my God, my God. You are getting there. You are not getting anywhere. You have to live righteously while we are still living in this world. The world where there are tribulations. Paul ended up saying, I know how it feels. I know what it means to be abased, to have nothing, to be hungry. An apostle of God. I know all to have enough. I know to how it feels to have nothing. But today we preach the gospel that says it is over. Over for what? We have to serve God. We have to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The problem is that we tell you about all these jewels that the children of Israel gathered. God saying that he will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And guess what? The Lord did. The Lord is saying, the good work that I have begun in you, I shall accomplish it. But how many of us are allowing God to accomplish that because of us, we are walking, we start to look at the things of this world. That is why people are not even afraid of God. Even the divorce in churches, you have been told that if this man does not want to come back, or this wife or this woman does not want to come back. Treat this woman like a, 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 a publican or republican, whatever they say. A publican, sorry. Like an outcast in other ways. Don't worry about him. But the same Bible says, as long as that wife of yours is still alive, what you are committing is an adultery. Yes, but I found my, my wife uh, uh, fornicating. Your wife cannot fornicate. It only, she only can commit adultery and you, you are married. Fornication. That is why when you find your wife fornicating, you can leave her. But you just said, now you can't. Yes, I said so. Mary, Joseph thought that he was, she was fornicating. That is why there was no problem to leave her. The Bible calls her, I want to repeat that, his wife. But they were not married. So be careful of scriptures. They were not married. The Bible calls him his wife. He, the Bible says that he espoused him her. What, what is the term we use nowadays? Before you get married to somebody, what do you do? Engagement. Engagement. Thank you very much. When you're engaged to somebody and they start fornicating, you can divorce them. 
Yes, there's no bond between the two of you. There is no bond. Marriage is the bond. This uh, an engagement is uh, that is, if you feel that like I don't want this person anymore, there's nothing wrong with it. You can leave that person before you get into it. Because when you are in, you can't. The Bible says that as long as that partner of yours is still alive, you cannot divorce. This is the problem that I'm talking about. That you come with this, your woman, the way she was. You got married to her. Now you go to a church. You see others. Those who are well shaped. Now you don't want your wife anymore. Go, marry them, and live forever in sin. And the Bible says in the book of is it Romans 3.26? Please help me. Or 6.23. What is the Bible saying? Saying it is sin that kills us. It is sin that denies us entrance into the kingdom of God. Read please. Uh, Romans chapter 3.23. Yeah. For all have sinned. For all have sinned. And fall short of the glory. And have fallen short of the glory of God. Right. Now go to 6. I think 6.23 again. The Bible says that all have sinned. Jesus came that we may be rescued from dying in sin. That we may be taken out, snatched out of the hand of the enemy. The Bible tells us about the wages of sin. For the wages of sin. For the wages of sin is death. Is death. But the gift of God is but the gift of God is what eternal life. Eternal life. This is the gift of God that tells you that when you are married to that woman, don't divorce her. What do I do now? Forgive her. End of the story. Ah, oh, pastor, what if your wife will do that? I will have to forgive her. I don't have a choice. I have to do the will of God. If I still want a woman in my life, it will be her again. Anything out of her is a sin. Apart from her is a sin. But the church of today will tell you, you can get married again. Your husband has been gone for so long. Ten years. No, no, he's not prepared to come back. Get married. Liars. There's no scriptural background to that. If we call ourselves Christians, it must be the word of God that tells us what to do. I want to show you that our problem is that we turn back from God and we start using scriptures against ourselves and against God. And have you heard what Gamaliel said about people who are trying to fight God? You must go read that book very carefully. When the apostles were preaching and they were brought forth before the court and Gamaliel looked at them, I don't know how his spirit picked up that this ones, so you've been fighting all of these people, but be careful of these ones. Because you will find yourself fighting against God. And no one can win that battle. You have lost already before you even started. Saying to them, this is what will get when you come out of Egypt, my people. This is what I have said. You still remember what the Bible says about the word of God when it comes out of his mouth? What is the word saying? Which Bible are you, are you, are you studying? Did they take out that uh, book out of your Bibles? The book of Isaiah. What is the Bible saying about when the word of God comes out of his mouth? I'm not even telling you the, the, the chapter this time. When the word of God comes out of his mouth, what is the Bible saying about that? It will not go back to him void without accomplishing what the Lord has sent it to do. He said to Moses, the children of Israel, when they come out of Egypt, I will do what? Because our God is faithful. He said that I will give him favor 
I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. This is God speaking. And what happened? When they left Egypt. Remember this was in chapter number 3. When they now left Egypt or when they were in the process of getting out of the land. They were borrowed a lot of things. I want to show you something. They were borrowed a lot of things as the Bible says. Go to chapter number 12. I want to show you something today. I pray that the Lord will grant the grace to teach the word more than preaching it. It was in chapter number 3 where the Lord said to them, what will happen? I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now it's in chapter 12. Read verse number 36. Just to make it all go to 35. Remember it talks about the jewels of silver. The jewels of gold. Listen to what verse number 35 says. Now the children of Israel have mm -hmm. done according to, the according to the word of Moses, which is the word that came from God. And they had asked from the Egyptians. They have asked from the Egyptians. Articles of silver. Articles of silver. Articles of gold. Articles of gold and what? And the same thing that God told them about that. This is what you should do. He said himself, I will ensure that these people have favor. So that what I have said will come to pass. Whatever God has said about you regarding your life, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. The favor you need, the Lord will give it unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. He's saying that these things they borrowed. Verse number 36. And the Lord had given the people favor. And the Lord the did what? He gave them favor. favor as he promised. In the sight of the Jews. For his promises are yes and they are amen in Christ Jesus. He did that. And what happened? So they granted them what they requested. They granted them what? They requested. What they requested. That's Not only that. And they spoiled the Egyptians. God is faithful. But as they were doing that, I want to give you the message of today. Why did God deliver them. Go back to chapter number 5. Go back to chapter number 5. Read please verse number 1. Afterward Moses and Aaron went to went in and told Pharaoh. 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 This is the Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Let my people go. Just stop there. Let my people go. I am sending Moses to deliver them out of your hands. Now I'm telling you, let my people go, Pada. <laughs> let my people go. Listen to why, to the I mean, the reason why God is saying, let my people go. Why is God delivering them? Why has God snatched you and I out of sin? Why is the Lord God Almighty still believing, I mean, waiting for people to be born again, to come out of sin? What is there that God wants from us? Why is the Lord making sure that Moses, who was minding his own business in the wilderness, you know Moses was working for Jethro's father-in-law. He was Moses, the man who watches after the flock of this man. He is a true shepherd that is watching after the flock. The man minding his own business, the Bible says, there was a time that when Moses was there, there was a bush burning but not being consumed. God had a reason for that. What was that reason? That they may hold a feast. That they may hold a feast 
to me in the wilderness. To me in the wilderness. You have to ask yourself, why is God desiring a feast? I want these people to hold a feast for me in the wilderness. I want to show you. Go to chapter number 8. Verse number 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Go to Pharaoh and go say to him, and tell Pharaoh. This is the Lord. That saith the Lord. Let my people go, let my people go that they may serve that me. they may save me because of. If Jesus will not die on the cross, my people will not be able to save me the way I want them to. Because they need this blood to wash them from all their iniquities. So he's saying unto Moses that I want them to have a feast. When they will be having a feast, remember a lamb shall be slaughtered. Blood shall gush out. Jesus' blood had to gush out for us to save him. Who deserves all men to be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. Says that let my people go. That they may serve me. God is so specific. Chapter number 9. Verse number 1. I want to show you that God took them out. It was not about silver and gold. It was not about the raiment. It was about them serving God. If my people. Will just serve me. And obey. They shall spend their days in prosperity and they are yes in pleasure chapter number nine verse number one then the lord said then the lord said again unto moses go into pharaoh go into pharaoh and tell him tell him again that says the lord Mordimori. god of the hebrews uh -huh. let my people let my people go that they may serve me that they may serve me this is what god wants from us that we may serve him gold silver God is not that much concerned about them. He said that silver is mine. But your souls is what matters to God. Your souls is what matters to God. This is what God wants from us. My people don't turn back. Save me. My people, don't turn back. I want you to, 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 to look at something. The book of Numbers, chapter number 11 for me, please. Read from verse number 4 to verse number 8. Most of us, we look back. And we start to complain and say that things are not working for us. How will things work? How will things work? Somebody go to also to the book of Galatians chapter number 1, read for me verse number 15 and 16. How will things work in our lives? Why well, you don't want to serve God? You, get, you go to church just to receive a prophecy. How many prophetic messages have you received? Has that changed your life? Do you see any change? Numbers chapter number 11. This is the problem that is in the church. Now the mixed multitude who were among the yield. Listen to this. Now the mixed multitude who were now among them yielded. Them yielded. These are the people who God gave, remember, silver and gold. These are the people who God gave silver and gold. They came out of Egypt full of silver and gold. The question that were they full of the Holy Spirit of God. Now these are the people who God said that I will give you favor. And the Lord did that. When they were praying, the Lord said that I have heard the prayers of my people due to their taskmasters. Therefore I have come. And the Lord heard their prayers. Because of his faithfulness. He had to send Moses. He had to send Moses for their deliverance. And because he's faithful, he delivered them out of Egypt. They have spent almost 430 years in Egypt. When they were only supposed to spend 400. 
But the Lord hear their prayer. For everyone who prays, the Lord will hear you. Everyone who kneels down and says that, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. I may not be born again, Lord, but Father God, I pray for your mercy. And gave their life to Jesus. And things will start to turn around in their lives. But now there comes the problem. When things are starting to turn around in their lives, and we start to see their commitment in the church, we start to abuse them. And we turn them to their, to their old paths. No wonder why the prophet said, ask for the old paths. We turn the people away, those who came saying that they love Jesus. They have been introduced to all these funny things. Marriage, I'm not saying marriage is wrong, but the moment you start taking the focus of people away from God and show them other things, they forget about God because everybody wants to get married. Instead of allowing the process to unfold until they see that God is saying it is not good for a man to be alone. When they get into that marriage, this woman, they become like the devil. Yes, because they were not taught. They are the ones who destroy their own families. Yes, because they were not taught. I cannot blame them. No wonder why the Bible tells the older women to teach the younger ones. Because we introduce them to something without giving them the foundation. The same people who God took out of Egypt. Listen to what they are doing now. Eleven four to eight. Don't forget when I tell you the scriptures. Now the mixed multitude who were among the yielded in the among them yielded to intense cravings. Mm -hmm. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Mm -hmm. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, mm -hmm. the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna mm -hmm. before our eyes. Now the manna was like coriander seed, coriander seed, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's color like the color of delia. The people went about and gathered it ground it on milestone or beat it in the mortar cooked it in pans and made cakes of it and its taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with oil mm -hmm. and when the dew fell in the camp in the night the manna fell on it then moses had the people weeping throughout their families everyone at the door of his tent and then anger and the anger of the lord was greatly aroused Moses also was displeased so Moses said to the Lord why have you afflicted your servant and why have I not found Wait, where are you ready 11 I'm now at like 11 um, I did that uh, purpose to leave you go reading because I gave you the specific verses where to read I said from verse number 4 to verse number 8 now you're going to start again from verse number 4 Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. Mm -hmm. So the children... Wait a minute! They yielded to what? Intense craving. This is the problem with the church of today. Covetousness. Lasting after things. Craving after things. Continue. So the children of Israel also wept again and said who will give us listen meat to this to eat who will do what give us meat to eat the very same god who has been providing for them now they are complaining but what was the cause of this complaint let's hear we what remember the, the complaint we remember the fish which we ate this is the problem most of Egypt. us we remember where we're coming from our heart is in the i mean our bodies are in the church but our hearts are where we used to live. This is the problem. People don't want to walk with God. They want to walk with God 
on their terms and conditions. Why is he not giving us this? Why is he not giving us this? The people were doing what? They thought of what they used to eat in Egypt. Remember that was a place of plenty, at the same time, suffering. And God is saying that I take you out of this place. And there's one thing that I like about God. There's a scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians, Chronicles chapter number 17, verse number 19, or you can find it in 2 Samuel chapter number 7, verse number 10. People are complaining. And the Lord is saying that I prepare a place for you. I'm taking you to a land that flows milk and honey. Where you shall be strengthened. Where life shall be sweet for you. But now they remember the things of the past. People died. Firstborns died in Egypt. Water was turned into blood. The whole land was filled with frogs. People had tumors. God showing his power. Red Sea was opened. God showing his power. Man fell from above. God showing his power. Signs and wonders the Lord did. Snakes of the Egyptian magicians were swallowed by the rod of Moses. And it never gained weight. Signs and wonders. That even the church of today is performing. But no lives have been changed. What is the Bible saying there? Whether it's 2 Samuel or 1, I think it's the same thing. Okay. 2 Samuel 7 verse 10. How, moreover, moreover, I will appoint the place for I will my appoint people. the place for my people. This is what God has done already. He has appointed a place for his people. Saying that I'm taking you to Canaan. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own move no more. That they may dwell in the place of their own and move no move more. No more. Uh -huh. nor, shall the nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them anymore. Oppress them anymore. As previously. As previously. But now we sometimes remember those things. Because when the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is being built with us, instilled in us, we remember back. That is why our commitment in the work of God, it also goes down. Because another gospel has been preached unto us. Listen to what Paul said in the book of is it Galatians chapter number 1, verse number 15 to 16. Listen to what Paul is saying there. Saints of God, unless we do what Paul did, we will not be able to please God. Somebody also go to the book of 1 Kings chapter number 19. I want us to finish quickly now. 1 Kings 19. Verse 19 to 21. 1, 15 to 16. But when it pleased God, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, who separated womb, me from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace, and called me through his grace, to reveal his son in me, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him, that I might preach him, among the Gentiles, among the Gentiles. I did not immediately, listen to this, I did not, Immediately, immediately confer with flesh, confer with with flesh, flesh and, blood. and blood. Some of us are still doing that. When we turn, we turn half. We still put the other foot in the world. The other one in the kingdom. And what is God saying when you are standing like this? What is the Bible saying? In the book of Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 15, what is God saying? I will vomit you. I will spill you out. First Kings 19, 19 to 21. When Elijah called Elisha as God has commanded him, Listen to what this man did. 
So he departed from there. He departed from there and found Elisha the and son found of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And man had some things to do in his life. He had something that probably was using every day. That was his routine, daily routine. And he was with the twelve. And remember that even what he is using. These cattle that he is using, they are probably used to him. They were like part of him. He knew that without them, I cannot live. But when God called, <coughs> listen to what the Bible says, a prophet was sent. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Uh -huh. And he left the oxen and ran after a He loved the oxen. Listen to this. He loved the oxen. He ran after Elijah. But something probably came into his mind when he was with Elijah. What happened? And said, please let me kiss my father. And let me kiss my father. And my mother. And mother. And then I will follow you. And then I will follow you. And he said to him, go back again. Go back. For I have done... For I, for what I have done to you. For what have I done to you? Go, if you want to go, go. So Nothing then, that is forcing you to follow me. Go. And then what did, what, what did the prophet do? So Elijah turned back from him. He turned back. Yes. And took a yoke of oxen. And he took a yoke of oxen. And slaughtered them. He slaughtered them. And boiled their flesh. Boiled their flesh. Make sure that it's gone and for good. Using the oxen's equipment. He used the equipment, all the wood and stuff. And gave it to the people. And they ate. They ate everything. And then what happened thereafter? Then he arose and followed Elijah. And, and he arose and followed Elijah. And you know the story what happened to him. Because he followed him. You know what happened. All the miracles. Signs and wonders were happening through his life. Why? Because his mind was clear. There was no that worldly mist in his mind. And then he left. And there came a woman. Who was the wife to Lord. When God took them out. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of Genesis chapter number 19 that even Lord asked God for a favor. The Bible says that behold 1919. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, with which thou hast shoot unto me in a saving me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now the city is near to flee unto, and it's a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It's not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, verse number 21, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything until thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Verse number 25. And he overthrew those cities and all plains and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. This is the problem. When you go to verse number 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law. Who had married his daughters. Who had married his said, daughters. And out. said, get up, get up, get out of, get out of the place. place. For the Lord will destroy the, the city. Lord will destroy the city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. <laughs> the Bible says, the wife, in the book of Joshua, chapter 19. The Bible says that his wife, we don't have the book of Joshua in that Bible. The Bible says it is because, it is because that she had daughters back in the city and he, she looked back. Most of us, 
look back. Most of us look back and that is not what God wants from us. Can we look unto him, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith? Many are going astray. It is because of the doctrine that you have received. But the Lord this morning is saying, I am willing to forgive you. If you are willing and obedient, the Lord will change your life. I know there are many people who came to church and did not know a lot of things about the church. Some went back to the world because they found the church to be worse than the world. Yes, it's true. Why will I come to a place where people's lives are not being changed for good, but they are, of course, being changed for worse? My wife once asked this man who used to work with him, saying that, why don't you give your life to Jesus? And she said, the man said to him, it is because I don't want to be poor. It is because I don't want to be poor. That is showing that the scripture where Peter was saying that people are saying wrong things about the gospel of Jesus Christ is because of these false teachers. I'm just paraphrasing it. We need to change. We want to preach to the gospel, I mean to the world. For the world to change when we have not yet been changed. We need Jesus in our lives. I'll forever tell you this. That, that your money, your gold and your silver on the day of wrath will not save you. It is only righteousness that has the power to save. Jesus spoke to them. I mean Peter in the book of saying. Get chapter number 2, verse number 38. He told them that they need to repent. He told them that they need to repent. Repent. All of you. And be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. For a mission of sins. And you shall receive. The gift. Of the Holy Spirit. Repent all of you. Then Peter said unto them. Repent and be baptized every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 3 verse number 19 he said. Repent ye therefore and be converted. This is what needs to happen. Repentance leads to conversion. When you repent, in other words, you are being sorry for the life you've been living. Then conversion comes. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming back. The world is at ease. And the Bible says, who unto him is at ease. What shall we do when the Lord Jesus appears? Teachings that are defrauding people, deceiving people, turning people into the enemies of God, making them to love the things of this world. The Bible says that if that is you, the love of the Father is not in you. They change one person, and when it comes into the church it becomes worse than what the person used to be there are some of us pastors who are more evil than the devil there are some of us so-called men of God were more evil than the devil. The devil is afraid of you. 
saying that I've been doing all evil stuff, but I've never seen this one in my life. And the devil will be telling you that the hell where you are going, that's not where I'm going. Because we have changed everything. We have defamed Jesus. The love of the world is in the church. The music in the church trying to emulate what is in the world. We're doing their dances and call them holy dance. We will all go and rot in hell with our holy dances. We wear like them. When a man of God is trying to teach about how people should wear, the same Christians are the ones who will come and argue, forgetting that there is Jesus to serve. There is Jesus to honor. There's Jesus to obey. The word of God will not change because of you. Say whatever you like. Like nowadays people are arguing. Instead of being concerned about their salvation, if women should preach. What is the Bible saying? I'm not going to answer that one. What is the Bible saying? And please don't come with that foolish excuse. Of saying that the woman of a Samaritan woman is the uh, what is this an evangelist? You must go and read your Bible carefully. What the Bible says about that uh, 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 story. People who went to the grave of Jesus they are the ones who went there. Who told you that they were evangelists? Have you ever heard of any evangelist in the Bible? A woman evangelist, a woman preacher. Yes, I know of a prophetess. Prophetess are there. That cannot be denied. Bishop woman, why have you hear that? I'm just trying to talk the Bible here. I'm not trying to start any argument. We need to serve God. We have to reverence God. Jesus is coming. The question is, are we ready? May the Lord have mercy on us. But we all need to repent. Repentance is key. The church that is supposed to be giving people life, they're taking it away from them. Because our churches are only concerned about income. It was not so in the beginning. <laughs> May the Lord forgive us in Jesus' name. We need to repent from all the evil doings. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And save God the way he wants to be saved. Father God, we thank you. King of kings, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the truth is not always sweet until it's understood. Tr truth can bring contentions because it hits the heart. This is exactly what happened for Stephen to die. It was because of the truth that he told them. He was killed by the truth that men did not want to accept and acknowledge. When Jesus comes, I pray that Lord God Almighty all shall be raptured. But the day is coming when we all shall stand on the judgment seat of Christ. And may we not be found wanting, Lord, on that day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. I give you praise, honor, and glory, for in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Saints, seek the truth. Seek the truth. The Bible is loaded with the truth that many of us don't want to open. How many of you today are still saying that Mary is the mother of God? That's foolishness. God has got no mother. The body that Mary carried in, his, in her womb, that is the body that was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this God did not die. The one we serve never died. The flesh died that he was in, but not God himself.
Jesus is God, yes. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. And may the Lord grant you peace. In Jesus' name. Shalom.